Hi everyone, it's Rax, bringing you a beginner's guide to Diablo 3. While I'm streaming, I regularly get questions that ask Rax, what do I do when I buy the game? Or what is the game even about? This video is hopefully going to answer those questions for you. In the description below, I'm going to put timestamps to all the topics that we're going to cover. So that way you can skip around in case you don't have time to watch the entire video or there's just particular topics that you want to cover. Let's get started. Okay, for our very first topic, let's cover what kind of game is Diablo 3 and should I buy it? Diablo 3 is an action RPG slash dungeon crawler game. You slay monsters, you pick up treasure, you find better equipment, and then you slay harder monsters for better equipment, for better treasure, rinse and repeat. One of the most common questions I get is, Rax, is there PvP in this game? No. I could go through the history of how they tried to do PvP or what's currently there, but effectively, there is no PvP in this game, which is a drawback and we really hope that in the future Diablo games, they will bring it back. So then the next question I get is, okay, if it's a PvE game, can I play with my friends? Absolutely. You can play in parties of four, meaning that you can play with three of your friends at the same time. And there are essentially three different game modes to Diablo. There's campaign mode, where you just go through the story which is where I would recommend new people start. There is adventure mode, where you efficiently farm gear and compete on the leaderboards. And then there's the weekly challenge rift, where you're given the same character and the same equipment and try to beat a certain time for very good rewards. And there's also a leaderboard for that as well. So if you like slaying monsters and hunting for treasure and games like Path of Exile, you will love this game and you should definitely get it. The next subject that I want to cover is when you buy Diablo 3, do you need to buy the Reaper of Souls expansion and the downloadable content to unlock the Necromancer? So I'll just give you the answer before I go into details. I would absolutely buy the Reaper of Souls expansion and to me, the downloadable content for the Necro is worth it, but is much more optional. But let's look here. Here's the Wikipedia for Reaper of Souls, and we can read through this real quick. It adds a number of new features. The new class, the Crusader, which is going to be incredible in the next season coming up, by the way. Um, specializes in defensive play. Okay. A fifth act is added, so you get... In the normal game, there's four acts, so it gives you a whole new one. In addition to the campaign, the expansion adds an adventure mode. This is absolutely what you need. So adventure mode is where everybody spends all of their time. It is essentially the end game for Diablo. It's what everybody does. So you can continue reading through this. I'll put the link in the description below, but you must have adventure mode to enjoy the end game. To me, making Reaper of Souls mandatory. Now, for the DLC for the Necro, the Necro is one of the sickest classes, one of my absolute favorite to play. And that's why I would recommend that you get it. But if you are sure that you never want to play a Necro, or you just really don't have the cash, that part is optional and you can still enjoy pretty much all of the game without that piece. But if you're gonna get Diablo at this point, I would definitely recommend getting Reaper of Souls with it. All right, so we have the game and we're ready to create our first character. I always get asked, Rax, what character should I play? They're all good. Really, they're all good. Certain classes are better than others in a given season, but you should play whichever one you want. 
So let's look at the classes together and I'll give you my brief overview. I apologize if my interpretation is a little bit different from other people. Don't want to offend anybody. Um, but I have played every class in this game for a long time. So I know something about them. The Barbarian. It's a warrior. They charge in and they bash in the faces of all their enemies. Now, one surprising thing is barbarians actually have a very popular spec called a support barb, which does exactly that, supports the group. So you don't just have to want to play a killer to be a barbarian. They have an amazing support spec that has been on top for a very long time. I would say the Barbarian is a good class to play for beginners because it's pretty easy to play and pretty self-explanatory. The Crusader is available if you purchase the expansion Reaper of Souls, and as we just went over, you probably should have that if you want to enjoy the full game. Um, the Crusader is a religious warrior committed to expunging evil from the world through discipline, honor, and unswerving vigilance. That's a perfect way to describe it. For me, the way I view Crusaders is they have very interesting specs. They're not quite mainstream, which makes them a lot of fun. So if you like to build and theory craft different specs, this is the class for you. Demon Hunter is your typical ranged class that does massive damage, often at the cost of being very squishy. So demon hunters can do a heck of a lot of damage. You just have to be good at positioning yourself and staying away from enemies. If you like ranged and that's the style for you, demon hunter is the choice. I would say demon hunters typically require a little bit higher skill than some of the other classes. The Monk, I think most would agree, is one of the most balanced classes. You can tank, which is supporting for your team. You can do specs where you do melee damage, like a rogue from WoW. And they also have range specs, which is what I play right now on my stream. I play a range spec where I drop a huge bell from the heavens and it blows up the whole room. I would say the Monk is one of the best classes to start with because they have a variety of specs. You can really see what you like. So if you have no clue between these seven, I'd go with Monk if you can't make a decision. Now, the Necro is only available if you bought the DLC. But I'll tell you, when Necros were released, they were like the best class by far. And they are still so strong. They really are the commander of the undead. They have bone specs where they rip out the guts of the corpses of people who die. And if you ever played Diablo 2 where you have the little skeletons and the little mages, well, I can tell you, especially the mages in this version of the game, they are so powerful. If you know how to play it right, they can really mow the lawn. So for Necro, I would say has one of the highest skill caps. Um, to play some of their end game builds does require um, a lot of knowledge of their mechanics. So keep that in mind when choosing to play the Necromancer. The Witch Doctor is your creepy, crawly, again, kind of off the wall builds with the Crusader. Um, right in this very moment in season 16, their role in the meta is not clearly defined. Um, but they are still extremely powerful. So if you like, the voodoo and the hexing. They have pets that are uh, different from the necromancers. They have little fetishes and gargantuans, and they have fire bats and lots of different things. If that kind of stuff interests you, which doctor is for you? And then finally, wizard is your typical mage. Um, lots of interesting specs for the wizard. You can summon meteors from the sky. You can shoot out energy twisters. Um, you can turn into an Archon and essentially shoot Kamehameha's at your opponents. If you like magic, Wizard's the best option. So one last thing I want to cover at the bottom is should you be a hardcore hero and should you be a seasonal hero? Okay. 
always be a seasonal hero? And the short answer to that is you get a bunch of benefits for no cost. When you choose to be a seasonal hero, you get to compete on the leaderboards, you get extra buffs, and you get access to the exclusive seasonal only items. When a season is over, which is typically three months, your character converts to a normal hero in the normal pool of players. So said, to say it a different way, if you don't check seasonal hero, if you just become a normal hero, the only thing you've done for yourself is you've lost all of that opportunity. You don't get the buffs, you don't get the access to the special rewards, and when that season's over, everyone's just going to be lumped with you anyway. So, always be a seasonal hero. Now, hardcore hero, that's a good name for it because it really does mean hardcore. What that means is, is that if you die, your character is gone forever. Your character, all of its gear, and everything that was in its inventory is gone. It doesn't matter the reason. If you could die because you played bad, you could die because your internet went out, or your cat knocked out your cord, or aliens landed and invaded your house. Any of those reasons, your character is gone forever. Blizzard will not restore your character, so be very careful in choosing that path, but if that's how you like to play, lots of people love hardcore. And then to answer one final question that I always get, Rax, can hardcore heroes play with non-hardcore heroes? No, they cannot. They're on different servers. And can non-seasonal heroes play with seasonal heroes? Not while the season is going, but after the season is over and the seasonal heroes convert, then they can. All right, so we've chosen our class, but now what? How do we play the game and what game modes are there? Let's look. So under game settings for campaign, this is absolutely where I would encourage new players to start. It's just where you play through the story of Diablo. You get to see all the maps, all the bosses, and all the acts. Definitely the best place to start. You could play in a private game by yourself, or you can add friends by going in the bottom right on the friends list and entering in their tag, and you'll be able to play with them in your game. Or you could make it a public game and pick the tag that you're looking for and join in with others. One important thing is the difficulty here, which ranges from normal all the way to Torment 13, and actually in the next patch it's going to go to Torment 16, but essentially picking harder difficulties gives you increased rewards. So when you're first starting out, I would strongly encourage you to start on normal because you've got no gear and you haven't played before, especially if you're on hardcore, because remember, if you die, that's it, and then look to increase it later. Challenge Rifts are a challenge that they issue once a week where they give you a build and a spec that everyone has to use. It's the same thing. And they give you a time to beat. And if you're able to clear the, the rift, which is like a dungeon or an instance in WoW, in under that time, you get some very nice rewards. It's definitely worth doing, and the nice thing about it is it lets you play a bunch of different builds and specs that you don't have to level up yourself. So that's once a week. And adventure mode is where you're going to be spending all of your time. It is the end game. You can do bounties, which are like quests for incredible rewards. You can do regular rifts, which is good for farming materials. Or you can do greater rifts, which is the PvE endgame content and how you compete on leaderboards. I'm not going to go into more detail on that for this introduction video, but if you have further questions on that, I will probably make a more detailed video in the future or just stop by my stream and ask me any questions that you'd like. So those are the different game modes and how to play them. All right, so we've selected our character and we know the different game modes now. Let me show you some basics about the game that's going to help you get started. So let's start with the blacksmith. The blacksmith can repair your equipment for a price, but it's always worth it to pay it. You can craft a 
bunch of different kinds of weapons which will help you as you learn specific plans and as you're leveling up if you have a really bad weapon as you level him up down here on the train tab he's going to unlock new recipes so always check out the blacksmith and see if you have the materials to make something better for you so for example if I just hit level 34 this requires level 34 I could click this and craft it and boom I've got a nice little axe that's hopefully much better than what I'm wearing same thing with armor here's all the different pieces you can craft again train the blacksmith up and you're gonna get a lot more options and then the salvage button this is gonna salvage different qualities of material of items in your inventory so this is gonna salvage all the yellows boom goodbye and I didn't have any blues or whites and you click on this anvil to salvage the legendaries you always want to salvage the loot that you don't want don't sell it because the materials are extremely valuable and the materials that you collect if you hit I for inventory appear right here so here's how many reusable parts arcane dust failed crystals death's breaths, and forgotten souls that I have okay so that's the blacksmith right here is your stash it has a bunch of different tabs where you can put your stuff you can right click this and give it different symbols to help you remember I don't even remember what this one was changed that I know that's wrong but that's okay this is going to let you save different builds if you want to switch between a bunch of different builds you can save them and switch between them immediately very nice feature that was added this little book is gonna identify all of your legendaries for you and by the way if you don't see all of these things in the beginning it may be because you're playing in campaign mode or you haven't unlocked it yet but you will unlock all these in the future here's the jeweler the jeweler can upgrade your gems for you it's very important they can forge jewelry this is not that important I, I never forge jewelry they can take gems out of things and of course you can train her up and then the mystic can enchant your items transmogrify something so if I don't like the way that this looks um, let's do the other one so you can see it better how do I get out of this excuse me let's go to the rabbit strike it's a little bit easier to see and we want to transmogrify it so it's this green blade right here well if I want it to look like a wolverine claw I can pay fifty thousand dollars and now now it looks like that then there's dye you can put your boots in here and dye them a different color you can customize how your character looks so anyway that is some of the basics on some of the in-game merchants and features that will help you all right let's look at another topic let's look through the options menu to see what settings you should pick to improve your quality of life so under options you can select pretty much whatever you want for video I have mine very high I live at mine to play at 60 FPS because that's what I capture on I would strongly recommend enabling large cursor because sometimes when you get into these huge fights um, it's hard to see your mouse and if you can't see your mouse then you might die so large cursor is a good idea the rest of it is kind of up to you I would match the resolution to whatever you're using on your monitor sound I'm kind of lame with this I just disabled Diablo sound and I listen to music so can offer too great of input on this but there's a sound menu in case you want to change something let's jump down to the gameplay one and this is important so here what is displayed is pretty important to decide on if you're just starting out I would display damage numbers so you can see how you're doing but when you get very powerful and especially if you're playing a build with a bunch of pets if you display regular damage numbers they literally can fill your entire screen and you can't make sense of what's going on so because I'm in the end game I have to, I have this disabled and I only want to see the critical damage numbers and those are the big ones anyway 
So one very important thing that I would do is I would always show item labels on drop and item label display I would set it to push to toggle on and off and we essentially always want this on. So we're going to do something tricky. We're going to jump down to key bindings. I want you to scroll down until you see show items on ground and I want you to bind this key to something that you will never hit. I put it on backslash because I never hit that button while playing Diablo. And then I hit backslash to enable the item tooltips and names and then I leave it on forever. So let me show you exactly what that, let me show you the difference. Let me show you why you want it. Okay. So over there I killed some monsters and here's what dropped but I can't see what dropped from here right unless I mouse over it but if I hit backslash now you can see it and now you can click on the title to pick it up so you always pretty much always want to have this enabled so one more time on options I item label display I push it to toggle on and off then I bind it to a key that I'll never hit in the normal course of playing Diablo and then I turn it on and I just always leave it on that's pretty important and I don't think that's how it comes standard on Diablo I would not show icons you can see the name just fine and here I would show advanced tooltips and show elective mode I really don't understand why Blizzard doesn't have this enabled by default but um, I think these are very critical to enjoying the game and understanding the mechanics. So I would check both of these. Again, I'm kind of a, I don't care about the cutscenes, so I skip them, but you definitely don't have to check this. One other important thing about this game is force standstill. Sometimes if you have an attack on your left mouse button and your left mouse button is also move, Sometimes you may be trying to walk, but an enemy runs right where you clicked, and instead of walking, your character attacks. I cannot tell you how many times this has killed me. So, to combat that, you can bind force standstill to up to two different keys. I always use spacebar, and I think this is a very good option to bind it to. And let me show you why. So force standstill means if I'm holding down spacebar in my case and I left click so I do my attack, it knows that I want to attack. So let's look at the difference. If I'm not holding spacebar and I hold, let's say this was an enemy, and I left click it, I'm going to walk there. I didn't want to walk there, I wanted to attack. So in that case, if I hold space, it forces my character to stand still. And since I have an attack bound on my left key, now when I left click, it throws a bell. Okay, so be very aware of what force standstill is and play around with how that works. But that would be my last key hint for someone starting Diablo. All right, now let's look at the skills menu to see how we make our character attack. So you can have up to six skills, one bound to each mouse button, and four bound to one, two, three, four. You can change these in key bindings, and you can also have four passives. Let's start with the passives. They're the easiest. Essentially, these are buffs that are just always active for you. So seize the initiative, dealing damage to enemies above 75% life, increases your attack speed by 30% for 4 seconds. Okay, You can read through them all and pick the ones that you want. When you get up to the max level, you can have 4 of them. As you level up, you will continue to unlock them. Now, for our 6 main skills, if we want to change one, we just click here. If I want to change what's on my left, click. 
and let's say I want to use Lashing Tail Kick. Now, when you pick a skill, you unlock as you level up different runes that change or enhance this skill. So let's look at Lashing Tail Kick by itself with no rune. It costs 50 spirit, it unleashes a deadly roundhouse kick that deals 755% weapon damage as physical. Well, the first rune I'm going to lock is Vulture Claw Kick. I notice right away it changes the damage type to fire, and it does a torrent of fire that burns enemies, and it does additional weapon damage over three seconds. So that's what that does. So just to illustrate, here's Here's the claw kick by itself. Again, I'm using that four standstill we just talked about. And let's see if it looks different if I choose this rune. Yep, see, now we're like a fiery little tornado. Okay? So, in general, always pick a skill and a rune. When you first unlock a skill when you're leveling up, it may not have a rune, but keep checking back as you level up, and typically you want to have a rune on every single skill. And that's pretty much it. Another topic. I always get asked, Rax, which piece of gear is better for me, X or Y? That is very hard to answer. The answer is, it depends. It depends on what build you're running and what stats your build prioritizes. I'm going to tell you a trick that really only works while you're leveling up and while you have bad gear, okay? When you pick up an item, let's say I, I picked up these gloves and I'm comparing them to my Ina's gloves that I'm wearing. If you look at the bottom right here, the stat changes if equipped. It would bring my damage down 14%, essentially. So I'm going to do less damage. My toughness is going to go up 24%. And my recovery, my ability to recover life when I'm not in battle is going to go up as well. These stats are somewhat reliable while you're leveling up and you don't have all these set bonuses and things like that. Um, you can use that as a barometer. If you see all green, then you should put on this new item that you found. If you find that you do plenty of damage but you are not having an easy time surviving, this may be good to put on. But if the monsters can't touch you, I wouldn't put this on and take the damage decrease. This only works while leveling up. When you're the max level, you've got to research certain builds. And a lot of guides out there will tell you exactly what you're looking for. It, it, it's hard to quantify it in a video. If you need help, look at a guide or you can always stop by my stream I will absolutely help you and if I don't know the exact answer to your class specific question we'll get you someone who can but that's a basic way that you can use while you're leveling up all right one final topic I'd like to cover are the different ways to interact with people and a little bit on Diablo 3 etiquette so I apologize, but right under my webcam right here, hopefully you can see this at the top, there is a gear icon to join public chat. And then there's different chats. There's Barbarian chat, Crusader chat, all the different class chats. There's general, hardcore, looking for group. Feel free to join any of those and discuss whatever you'd like with people. Similar to other games, don't spam the chat be nice and respectful and I think you will find that a lot of people on Diablo are very helpful. One more thing down here there's a communities button if you open that up and hit find there are a bunch of different popular communities that you can join to discuss things or if you're looking for a group it's another great way to find people. And one last thing, if you do join a group with these people, let's say you join them to do bounties, you know, don't be that guy that joins and just sits around while everyone else does all the work and tries to take all the rewards. People will notice, and they can try to kick you out of the group or 
they might just leave the game and leave you hanging. So just make sure that whatever you're looking for is what you intend to do and obviously it's more fun to play the game than just sit around so just keep that in mind and treat others how you want to be treated. Well that wraps it up everyone. Thank you so much for watching my Diablo 3 Beginner's Guide. I hope this is going to be enough to get you started and in the future I plan to make more videos diving deeper into some of these different topics so we can cover the middle game and kind of the end game here. I stream every single day so please come check me out on Twitch and if this video helped you please like and subscribe to see the content that I'm going to put out in the future. Thank you very much.